Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a potentially hypothetical but also maybe real object known as a blitzer. This is a kind of a theoretical object that we believe exists out there and could even help us explain the phenomenon known as FRB, fast radio bursts. Let's talk a little bit more about what these blitzers are and welcome to What the Math. So this is actually one of those blitzers. Uh, this is a very, very fast spinning neutron star that technically classifies as a pulsar, which you can see pulsating from a distance if I move away a little bit farther away from it. So here at this distance, you can see these two very large astrophysical jets projecting from the middle of the star. But at the same time, they also classify as magnetars essentially the most powerful magnets in the universe. Powerful enough to actually, well, kill you if you get close enough to them. Now, that's not really what we're talking about today. What we are talking about how these unusual objects actually can potentially create FRBs, which we still couldn't really explain. So let me go um, through a bit of a history of how these objects are created so you can actually understand uh, why we believe these objects not just exist, but could even maybe create the FRBs. So, for example, a star like Deneb that has enough mass to actually create a neutron star, if it spins fast enough initially, so if its initial spin is actually large enough to be noticeable, when it goes supernova and when it um, creates the neutron star, which we're going to do right now by, well, actually just initiating supernova manually, um, the leftover there is going to be an extremely fast spinning neutron star, but if the mass of the star is large enough, this neutron star is going to be at its limit right before it, it becomes a black hole. Now, this limit is known as the tomer oppenheimer uh, volkov limit, and I've actually previously mentioned it in one of the videos. There's a, a video I made about it a few years ago. And what it means is that if you cross this limit, the object becomes a black hole, but if you don't cross this limit, the object uh, remains as a neutron star. But sometimes it just so happens that it's just right at that limit or even just a little bit above it uh, where it should technically create a black hole. And in this case, you can actually see that it did create a black hole. However, if this uh, star initially spins really fast and as a result creates an even faster spinning neutron star, instead of creating a black hole, it will actually create an extremely unstable magnetar that's going to be spinning so fast that um, it's actually going to maintain its neutron star condition until it slows down the spin. Essentially, the centrifugal forces uh, while the star is spinning are going to maintain its shape and its stability and for as long as it spins really fast, it's not going to collapse into a black hole. But as soon as it starts slowing down its spin, the centrifugal forces will no longer be able to support uh, itself from collapsing and at this point, this neutron star becomes a black hole, which is right there in the middle. Now, we believe that this fast-spinning neutron star that's about to become a black hole is what we refer to as a blitzar, which could be responsible for the FRBs. Now, why is that? Well, FRBs are fast radio bursts. There are types of signals that um, only happen for a millisecond or several milliseconds and usually don't repeat themselves. Sometimes they do, there are actually two repeated ones we've detected so far, but normally they just happen once. And no other uh, radiation comes with them. No gravitational waves, no uh, gamma rays, no x-rays. It's really just the actual radio bursts. And theoretically, we, we believe that when a neutron star or a pulsar or a magnetar, which are basically the same thing, um, turns into a black hole, it may potentially release a tremendous amount of energy in, um, well, radio waves, which is what we think maybe FRBs are. So one of the explanations for these FRBs is when an extremely fast spinning star known as a blitzer slows down enough to turn into a black hole. 
Now, this is still not really completely uh, proven or shown. It's still very, very theoretical, um, but the actual mathematics and theory behind it is quite sound. And I guess the next question is, so why is it that these objects here would even actually um, slow down? Why would they stop spinning as fast as before? And the answer to this is in the actual nature of these uh, neutron stars and magnetars. When they exist as neutron stars, uh, they have a tremendously powerful magnetic field, but they also produce a lot of emissions. Like these jets, for example, are some of those emissions. And as the magnetic field kind of rubs against this, these really highly energetic and highly charged particles, it actually sort of works as basically friction. It slows down the spin um, piece by piece. And over a period of a million years, it will actually slow down the neutron star enough for it to no longer spin as fast as it used to. So in other words, even though if uh, initially the neutron star was spinning like uh, close to basically speed of light, because sometimes these objects spin really, really ridiculously fast, eventually, because of the action of the magnetic field, it will slow down. And if there is nothing else supporting itself from collapsing into a black hole, if it reached that limit I previously mentioned, then it will most likely collapse into the next stage, which is the black hole. So that's what we think blitzers are. And this is one of the probably more scientific and more realistic um, explanations for what FRBs are. But um, there are obviously other explanations which we'll cover in some of the future videos. I personally do think that uh, these objects might be responsible for some of the FRBs, but maybe not all of them, because we've detected several FRBs that were repeated, and this would not explain how uh, that could happen. Unless a black hole can turn back into a neutron star and then become a black hole again, it would not really be a good explanation. But we'll talk about these in some of the future videos, so do subscribe if you still haven't, and maybe even share this video with someone who you think may like and enjoy watching space videos. In one of the future videos, we'll discuss this in more detail, so do come back. But most importantly, watch the video tomorrow, because you might learn something you didn't really know about before. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And maybe even consider supporting the channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot, and I do appreciate all of your support so far. Thank you guys, bye-bye.